Hello, my name is Bogdan. I'm the owner of DNN Sharp. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to do web service validation for a group of controls in uh, Action Form. I will uh, do an example, and that is validate a bank account. And uh, for this purpose, there are already there is already a sample file, a sample configuration that comes with Action Form, but you won't see it in the uh, in the interface but you can find it on this and i'll show you how to get to it activate it and experiment with it or create a new uh, new configuration files starting from that file so let's get to work i've added a new module to the page and i will go to create the fields i will i will delete all the existing fields and then i will add uh, bank account and then um, uh, branch code and finally an uh, account type and this I actually can make um, a multiple choice maybe with drop down and I will put the value uh, I, I will actually take the value from the provider. Uh, the provider that I'm using, it's called the Netcash. It's a um, provider from South Africa. But you need to have an account with them for this to work. But this is just a sample. You should probably integrate with your uh, provider, with your uh, merchant. So. Uh, you see, that's why I need the account number, I see I need the branch code and I need the account type, which can be one, it's a current account, two, it's a savings account, and three, it's a transmission account. So I will show you how to also to do this in um, action form, so it looks nice. So you do it like this, checking, checking is one, and then um, actually it was current and savings. So current is one savings is two so account type will be a drop down and the rest will be text and i will make all of them required and i will save this now it's just like a regular form if you don't fill it it will say the field is required you can fill it with anything you can submit it it will say it's successfully submitted but now we need we want to validate that this bank account is actually valid and to do this i will go to the disk in the action form uh, folder so you see it's desktop modules avatar soft action form and here you can see there's a config folder and here a group validators folder and here you can see it's a default uh, file that uh, you shouldn't change this contain the at least one is required validator and other validated validator that uh, we may add in the future but if you modify this file it will get overwritten on updates so if you want to create your own validators it's uh, you need to create new files and uh, action form will pick them automatically so no notice how netcache is another file that has a similar structure so, um, you see it's just an XML file, there's a root node and then there's one validation node for each, uh, for each uh, validator. Now if I go back to the form, and I go back to uh, manage screen, and I open the validation screen, you'll see there is no uh, web service validator for now. The reason why uh, it doesn't appear in this field is because of this uh, attribute sample equals true. So first thing you need to do is remove this attribute. Now I save, I go back to the site, I refresh the page. And now if I go to validation, you can see another validator called valid bank account so now what i need to do is to place 
LD controls in the same validation group. So they are validated at once. So I'll put them all in group one. And I will select the valid bag and count for all. If you don't select the right uh, group and the right validator for all the controls, uh, the validator won't have access to this data on submit. So you cannot validate the whole group. Okay, so now I go and I will save this. And I will get back to the configuration file to show you a few more things. Okay, so validation, this is the title that you show you seen in drop down. This is the type that implements the web service validator. You don't need to change this unless you're implementing your own, uh, your own uh, custom validator, in if, which case you would change this type to your custom validator type. Then it needs a unique JavaScript name. And then an error message. If this is missing, I will show you way down below. There's a regex that can match the error. So there's a node called error regex. And if there is no uh, default message, it will take whatever is uh, matched by this regex. Some web services return friendly messages like uh, the bank account is too short or something like that, while others simply return an error code or uh, an unfriendly message and you don't want to show that. And then you put this error message, which is generic. Bank account is invalid. Okay. And then it starts with the params node. And here you actually supply any everything related to connecting to the web service. So there's a new URL. The, uh, this one is a SOAP service. But you can, using this um, technique, you can uh, connect to any kind of web service, uh, REST services, and anything. It's basically, uh, here we operate with uh, basic HTTP concepts. Okay, so regardless, this is a SOAP uh, serv uh, web service, uh, it does a post. That's all it does. So it does a post to this URL. And then it has a headers node, and here you put one header per line with name followed by double column followed by value headers. And then you can put get parameters in this format. And then you put post parameters. You can put them in this format if you want to post multiple parameters. Or in this case, in the soap case, I will just post an XML and it will look like this. This is the SOAP message. So it has this structure. And here, notice the parameters. So I have username, password, and PIN. And this one, uh, I actually created uh, my tokens for them. If you don't know what my tokens is, you should check it out. It's uh, another module of ours. So I don't have to keep these values in the configuration file uh, where, uh, where it, they will not be so uh, protected and uh, usable. If I want to use multiple places, I would have to put the actual value in multiple places, and it would be difficult to manage and to secure. So uh, I have the username, the password, and the PIN, and then I have the values. And notice here, bank account, branch account, and account type. These are actually the name of the fields. that are here. So it's bank account, it's branch code, and it's um, account type. You can change this to whatever you want, but I recommend uh, that you leave them to the default value because it will work in this case. Okay, so going back to the configuration file, this is the message that's being posted to the Netcash web service for validation. Then the next thing, when it receives the response, Action Form uh, runs a regex to e identify if the, uh, if the bank account is valid or not. So this is a regex. If it matches one group, one, uh, the first group, if it matches, so this is group one. If there exists this node with value zero, then it will consider a success. Otherwise, it will consider a failure, and then it will either uh, run this regex to get the actual error message, 
or it will take this default message okay now let's get back and see how that really works so I will put uh, something here and I will submit it and you see the button changes please wait but this will take a while since this is making a web service and it also depends on the speed between uh, your server and the other server and also how long how fast the other server is and you see I just got an error message that saying that the bank account is invalid in this case I know that this branch code is probably invalid so uh, this is it about uh, web service validation uh, remember you can also use it to validate only one field though we'll uh, probably add a special validator at a later time to validate only one field and um, uh, this is it um, uh, thank you for your time and I hope this has been helpful for you